hearing the stories and seeing that pain for me just made it all the more important to become part of the trial. So tell me about that process. When when were you kind of uh, signed on to participate with the trial and where are you at with that? So the process was interesting. I reached out to someone um, who was involved with a trial and I said, you know, I'm really interested. I wanna do my part. I'd like to apply for the trial. And so I was put in touch with the um, principal investigator, the PI, and they were very thorough about the entire process, what I would need to do, what the informed consent would look like. And you know, they actually sent me a copy of the informed consent. It was a 20 page document of all the things that I could expect in the trial. You know, the fact that, you know, I might get the vaccine, but I might not and may only get a placebo. Um, the follow up period, you know, they want you to follow up for a couple of years. So it's, you know, are you committed to being in the trial, you know, for 24 or 26 months. So the, those kinds of questions at the beginning, and I thought to myself, all right, I'm going to make the appointment. So I made the appointment to go to the study center. And they do the same thing again, they go, you sit down with someone who's on the trial team, and they go through every line of that 20 page document with you to ensure that you're comfortable and you really do want to be part of the trial. And knowing that it's a, it's a, very, it's a pretty good time commitment or over two years, but you wanna be involved. And so I, you know, I signed off, you know, the first thing they did was a physical, after I signed off the consent, the first thing they did was a physical exam, you know, just to make sure that I was a relatively healthy person. And I mean, I do have medical issues. You know, I am, I am hypertensive. I have high blood pressure. You know, I am quite a bit on the heavy side, but I'm working on it. And so, you know, but that's important to have that kind of person in a trial. So you see how they respond, should they get the vaccine? So that was important. After the physical exam, I did a urine pregnancy test. It was negative um, because I'm done with that. And you know, so after the urine pregnancy test, um, they drew a bunch of blood, you know, again, to make sure your lab values are all within normal limits and also to see if you have any antibodies to being exposed to COVID. After that, I had what I called the COVID test into my brain because I felt like that's how far that swab went up to get my samples. Um, so I tested, I was tested for COVID. And then after all of that was done, I got the first injection. And I didn't feel you know, much after the first injection. I had some pain at the site. And that was fine and it went away in a few days and I filled out my study diary. I took my temperature every day, reported any symptoms I was feeling until the next visit. So that my first visit was in October, second visit was in November. And at the second visit, you go through pretty much everything again. So you, you do the urine pregnancy test again, um, again, negative. They make sure that you're, you know, they make sure that you, um, that you're physically healthy, you're feeling okay. They took a whole lot more blood again another COVID test into the brain. At least that's what it feels like. It, do, it doesn't go that far, but it feels like it does. And then, and then I received the second injection and you know, I had to sit and wait 30 minutes to ensure that I was feeling okay. And then I you know, left, I went home, I played with my kids and you know, watched a movie with my husband after the kids were in bed and went to bed. The next morning I woke up, my arm was super sore. I mean, it was sore the first time, but this was like, I felt like I had gotten a tetanus shot or somebody had slammed a two, point, two by four into my arm. I mean, I was sore. I felt really tired, which was unusual. I slept a lot later that day than I normally do. I got about 10 hours sleep. Most days I don't get more than five or six and I still felt exhausted. So that was odd. Um, I had a headache, which was frustrating, but you get through it. Several hours after I was up and about, I was like, gosh, I'm really tired. I'm just going to take a nap. And I felt a little chilly, so I pulled a blanket over me. I slept for two hours, which I never do on a weekend because I have small kids and who has time for that? I woke up from the nap and I was freezing. I mean, outright shivering, I had chills and I'm just like, something's up. And I took my temperature and it was 101.5 or 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And I just thought, okay, now I've got a fever. This is not good. And then I went, wait, I got a shot yesterday huh and you know you put two plus two together you're thinking to yourself okay maybe i actually got the vaccine and truth be told i don't know yet i still don't know because we haven't been unblinded but i'm like maybe i got the vaccine well, that would be cool so now my husband's jealous because i had a reaction so he thinks i got the vaccine and we don't know for sure we're still waiting to find out but sunday morning so i got shot on a friday i was kind of off on saturday Sunday morning, I felt great again. I mean, the fever was gone. I was still a little bit achy, but nothing, no big deal. The arm hurt the most and that was it. And I went on about my life. So, you know, I've had some follow-up visits since then. So far, so good. I haven't had any issues. And, you know, now I'm looking forward to being potentially unblinded and finding out, you know, if I got the vaccine or not. Do you know when that day will be? I don't know exactly what day. I keep being told soon. 
<laughs> so I'm really hoping soon because I'm actually eligible to get it at work, you know, in my work as a physician.